before I'd even finished editing the uh, video on this little prototype bike preamp, uh, the circuit board prototype's arrived. So I've just uh, attached one to the connectors from one of these inline casings, and that's uh, that's uh, another board. Uh, move in closer, you can see what it looks like. You get an idea of the size. Go on, when it focuses. Focus. Focus. No? There we go. Ten mil wide and I've forgotten the exact length, it's about about thirty mil long, somewhere around that. Um, it's sized to fit inside one of these attenuated cases, which it'll do quite easily. Um, and this is set up so I can later fit it. But I want to leave it open whilst I'm testing it. Um, it's attached with the bits of component lead to the plug end because that's completely rigid and then the socket end has a, a link wire which once it once it's that's in the casing to be about there that can be shortened a bit just enough to be able to solder the uh, socket on the end and then it'll that will coil up and push in it doesn't want to be rigid at this end because these pins float and they will get pushed about as you use it and plug things in and if it was anything rigid it would likely crack connections fairly quickly so that's definitely known that these are flexible wires anyway uh, at the moment I've got the setup with the uh, SM58 on the left channel SM7 on the right channel both with gains turned up full and I'll, well, I'll, go, I'll go back to this one to start with let me set this at mid gain a screwdriver, that's the wrong one. I'll do. Just set that at exactly halfway. That. That's set it to exactly half gain. I'll put it on the SM7. Just turn the gain down to avoid clicks. Plug that in there. And plug the preamp into there. Now, if I turn this back up, avoid it shorting to anything, that should now be uh, uh, significantly louder. I mean, it's enough to get to peaks at um, near enough minus six at the distance I'm at, which is just over a foot from it. So that should be quite reasonable for general use and so that's only at half get half gain on the pot but it's not a linear gain adjustment it will go up very rapidly right at the end um, whichever whether it's built you know this style or one of these little boards uh, same circuit same function uh, when the pot gets to, to low values it changes how it works well it's progressively changed how it works at high values the two the two sides are almost independent and the emitters can each independently follow the signal inputs as the resistance on the gain pot gets down to near zero the emitters are tied together and then the signal input range becomes very very limited the gain is a lot higher but the signal range for linearity is very very low because you're relying basically on the junction resistances transistors to absorb the voltage changes rather than the transistor emitters being able to adjust and track so just keep the gain down to a reasonable level something that's enough for everything to work as you need but not above that to avoid uh, linearity problems or possible overload problems anyway that's that one working uh, let me go back to the I'll go, I'll go back let's go to the bare mic momentarily just a reference I forgot to unplug it I'll have to take that click out but that's back to the bear mic and if I carry on and put the new board in and see how that goes 
And again, I've not unplugged it, so the big clicks there I've got to uh, take out. But that's with that, and hopefully that should be pretty much identical to that one. At least that's the whole idea. And these PCBs don't have the transistors fitted deliberately uh, because I couldn't find anything that I could be sure would work well in surface mount transistors. And also it doesn't give you a choice then. All the other components are just resistors, capacitors, there's nothing special there. The transistors are what set the noise level and to some extent the gain if you take it all the way up so it's not got the emitter resistors in line. Uh, so it's down to personal preferences what you use in there. Um, the, I think the other thing I've not thought of at the time, but looking at these, now I've got them, I think they're actually small enough you, that, could, that could probably be built into some types of dynamic mic casing to convert the mic to have more gain and be phantom powered directly, uh, rather than having to be built in line. I mean, that avoids having to buy a casing or any extra connectors or anything. But I must stress they are only for dynamic mics. They do not pass phantom power through. These run on phantom power themselves, but they don't pass any power through, so they only work with mics that don't need power. And also at moderately low levels as well, like dynamic mics. They're not, they're, they're not intended for very high level use. Though they'd probably work with a gain turned down. They'd probably stand quite a reasonable level with the gain, the gain down to a minimum. But that's not the intended use. Anyway, that's uh, a quick test and uh, a quick comparison. I'll do a, a separate video on how to actually assemble these into the casing um, in case anyone, in, anyone's interested in that. And uh, if everything looks okay, I'll, I'll probably put these on eBay. Um, I think if you buy your own attenuated casing, which is a standard part, or you know, the attenuator rather than strip the casing, um, it, uh, it should overall still be quite a low cost device and a, a lot lot cheaper than a lot of the commercial stuff uh, to do a similar job. Anyway, that's it and I have remembered to actually uh, set Audacity recording as well as the screen recorder so uh, I can do separate samples for this, this section as I've forgotten the other bit. Okay anyway that's it thanks for watching.